I've been uh, struggling, fighting for about two weeks with the paper wasps. They are wasps that are red with some yellow and black stripes on them. For some reason, they want to make hives in different places in my laundry room, which is in the carport. Um, in the ceiling of the outdoor carport, in the ceiling of my porch, which is by the front door, and um, I have six, six stings on my leg. They don't leave a stinger, but they leave a hole. It's about two millimeters wide. No, one millimeter wide and like two millimeters deep. It's weird. And uh, for several days it was swollen, itchy, painful. And I learned my lesson not to wear capri pants in the backyard because they're so loose. Um, they end up going up the pant leg, and I'm not going to take off my pants in the yard to see where it is, so I just have to accept that I'm going to get stung. Or I could get some leg warmers or just use some very long knee-high socks to cover the pant leg so there's no space for the wasps to get up there. Anyway, I had thought that these wasps were making nests under the ground because some bee-type creatures have a nest underground and there's a small hole there like the size of a dime and maybe I had, you know, walked near it or something. But about three days ago, I saw the hive. Uh, it's on the bottom of a, of a palm plant, and it's about the size of an apple. And I've been trying all kinds of things to get these insects to realize that this is not a good place to make a, another hive or all these other mini hives. I don't get it. So I tried spraying them with vinegar with uh, vinegar and other things in the vinegar, like peppermint extract, eucalyptus oil, orange oil. Um, what else? I don't even remember what else. I also made these traps, homemade, that you see on YouTube, where you put sugar and water and vinegar and fruit juice in a bottle and you hang it and all of a sudden it fills up with all the wasps where none of my traps work. Wait, I did have one trap, which is a professional one, and there was only one wasp in it. Another wasp I found dead on the ground, I don't know why, and um, actually it was in, in the laundry room on the floor. And I've been studying up on them online because uh, Knowledge is power, as they say. And when they sting you, there's a chemical in there that marks you, and then all the wasps in the hive know that you are an aggressor, an enemy, because, you know, the first few days, um, they didn't bother me, you know. Sometimes uh, they'd land on my arm and I'd look at them and study them, you know, because I want to make sure I'm dealing with the same in insect that I think I'm dealing with. Uh, or they'll fly and bump into my head. But all of a sudden, after the stings, they were very aggressive, you know, flying real close. And like I read online, um, do not do not antagonize them because they can fly a lot quicker than you can run away. So after I was sure that it's a paper wasp, because, you know, they have different characteristics, these insects, and you might be doing something you think is effective and you could get stung all over. But anyway, I was pretty sure it was a paper wasp and they, they're very um, inactive at night. So all the information online and in YouTube videos was 
you can remove the hive at night because they will not attack you at night. In the daytime, they're flying around, they're drinking nectar out of flowers. But at night, they're just doing housekeeping and, you know, hanging, hanging around the family, guarding the queen. I still was scared, though, so I waited till it was almost dark, and I suited up with the winter gloves. And the only thing that was exposed on me was this part so I could see what I was doing. So what do they do first? I, I got this mixture of liquid and I put all kinds of stuff in it that, that they would hate, you know, like the peppermint extract, etc. And uh, I got real close and I had it in the container and I threw the whole thing, um, which was about three cups, on the hive and I ran and I didn't get stung. The next morning I looked there and it wasn't so many anymore. It was like there was only three, but they were busy doing repairs, I guess. And they were still in the laundry room and in the carport and in the porch. So what I decided to do last night was get the hose and use a powerful spray to make the hive fall on the ground. So I did that. And I got, I got pretty close, but it was so dark, I couldn't see. It was a cloudy day anyway, I couldn't see what I was doing, I don't know what happened. And so then I went and got this extension pole I have, which a neighbor gave me, and it goes up to uh, 16 feet. So after the holes, I got this uh, extension rod, and I was poking around there. I still couldn't see what I was doing, but uh, hopefully I, I was... Uh, thinking it probably fell. So this morning I went out there again and and I couldn't see where the hive was. You know, it was gone. But there they were. There was two or three of them starting all over again. Building this tiny, tiny little piece it was about as big as a raisin, um, you know, making a new hive. So if this is how it's going to be, I could live with it because every time the um, the hive gets too big, then I can do the same thing. Uh, hose it off with a powerful spray of water and then um, knock it down with the extension rod. My only problem is if they start again in the carport, the porch, in the laundry room, I'm just going to have to keep doing this, you know, spraying them with the peppermint extract and vinegar and, uh, you know, trying to keep them from, you know, getting a really big hive going uh, on the outside of the house. So what I want to remind you of, please study before you engage in something like this, because if you've got the wrong kind of insect, for instance, a hornet, they will attack you at night. So you got to know your enemy. Um, and. Um, I think that anything we do and go through, any phase of life, any experience that's not very happy is always good for something. It's some kind of benefit, if only to make us stronger and, and help us to uh, share with other people so we could help them. So don't worry about whatever you're going through. Um, people that have an easy life and are very spoiled, they're very, very weak. They're very, very inexperienced, and they're not very interesting to talk to.